Why do we go to confession? For the forgiveness of sins that we have committed against God? Do we understand that God not only wants to forgive our sins, but also our broken attitudes, our disordered passions, our unresolved problems, the festering wounds of the past and the present, to cleanse us of any unresolved issues that may hold us back from truly loving God with a child's heart? We also go to confession not only to receive God's forgiveness, but also to be educated in the teachings of the faith, the Catholic faith, and also to avoid ways of the evilness of sin, to learn of the wisdom of the church of how to avoid that sin that causes us to fall. Do we realize that confession is so much more than forgiveness? It is truly about healing and education. It is about repentance and conversion of heart. It is about contrition. It is a conversation with God to say, I am sorry, and then to go out in our human frailty to make satisfaction, to appease the justice of God, to experience his mercy. Restoration from a broken relationship between God and man and man and God through his grace. And grace is the free and un, un, excuse me, grace is the free and undeserved help of God that he gives to us to share in his divine nature. It is a participation in the life of the most blessed Trinity, which can and is lost by the committing of mortal sin. When we do something of grave matter with full knowledge and full consent of the will, such as evil thoughts, being unchaste, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly, and all these evils that defile. Scott Hahn st stated, the essence of sin is our refusal of divine sonship. Our Holy Father, St. John Paul II expressed, mortal sin exists also when a person knowingly and willingly, for whatever reason, chooses something gravely disordered in fact, such a choice already includes contempt for the divine law, a rejection, of, a rejection of God's love for humanity and the whole of creation. Therefore, we need sanctifying grace. Therefore, we need forgiveness. Therefore, we need to go on to our knees to say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. To come to the realization that I cannot and we cannot do it alone. We need a Savior, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him that we have access to the Father. Actual grace is what keeps us alive. Sanctifying grace, free of mortal sin, is which allows us to go to heaven. Through the sacrament of confession, we continue on the road to sanctity or holiness of life. We are washed clean, renewed, strengthened, encouraged for the continued journey to go forward in this pilgrimage of life to capture the beatific vision. Frequent confession affords us a greater understanding of the gift of Jesus Christ himself in the most blessed sacrament. It allows us to be as pure as possible, as pure as the angels, to receive him worthily truly present body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Again, John Paul II expressed, both sacraments, the Eucharist and confession, were instituted in the upper room. Can you imagine that? Did you ever meditate upon that? On Holy Thursday night, Jesus Christ himself institutes himself into the blessed sacrament. On Easter Sunday evening, he comes to them and says, Shalom, peace be with you. Whose sins you shall retain are retained, and whose sins you shall forgive are forgiven. He breathed on them, giving him the authority, or giving them the authority, his priest, not just to forgive sin, but to absolve sin. In his name and in his authority, for your sake, for mine, for mercy's sake, himself. 
and the institution of the sacrament of reconciliation immediately after Christ's passion and death on the very day of the resurrection is so significant that it should be considered alongside the importance of the Eucharist itself. They are hand in glove. In the confessional, Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, leads us back to the Father, so that now that we have been ransomed, healed, restored, and forgiven, we can enter into the fullness of our dignity as the Father's children. Confession is a relationship between the Son to the Father inspired by the Holy Spirit. Reconciliation, John Paul continues, is principally a gift of the Father to the Son for our salvation. If Jesus is called the divine physician, then the Eucharist is the medicine of immortality. I absolve you. Unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you will not have life eternal. It is an encounter with God through his priests. Our Lord said to St. Faustina, when you approach the confessional, know this, that I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act in your soul. You may, ha you may make your confession before me. The person of the priest is only a screen. Never analyze what sort of priest it might be that I am making use of. Open your soul in confession as you would to me, and I will fill it with my light, the rays of my mercy. And just for a moment, take a look at the image of divine mercy and notice the rays that are emanating out from the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and how they envelop just not the entire world, but your soul. Jesus wants to heal us, not just forgive us. Jesus wants us to have a relationship with the most blessed Trinity. So therefore, that warmth light that comes from the very depth of his mercy, his heart, he draws us into it. And he asks us for one thing, that we allow him to do it. Pope Benedict points out that the role of the priest in the confessional is to make their penitents experience the Heavenly Father's merciful love. Because what is central to confession is the personal encounter with God the Father, the Father of goodness and of mercy. Many people may ask, and it's been asked throughout the centuries, why do I have to go to a priest to go to confession to have my sins forgiven? Why can't I just tell God I'm sorry and he understands? Maybe the answer is found in the Catechism on the Priesthood by John Vianney, St. John Vianney. He states, go to confession to the Blessed Virgin Mary or to an angel. Will they absolve you? No. Will they give you the body and blood of our Lord? No. The Holy Virgin cannot make her divine son descend into the host. You may have 200 angels, but they cannot absolve you. A priest, however, simple as he may be, can do it. He can say to you, go in peace, I pardon you. Oh, how great is a priest. The priest will not understand the greatness of his office till he is in heaven. If he understood it on earth, he would die, not of fear, but of love. The other benefits of God would, no, would be of no avail to us without the priest. What would be the use of a house full of gold if you had no one to open the door? The priest has the key of the heavenly treasures. It is he who opens the door. It is he who is the steward of the good God the distributor of his wealth. Without the priest, the death and passion of our Lord Jesus would be of no avail. Look at the heathens. What has it availed them that our Lord has died? Alas, they have no share in the blessings of redemption while they have no priest to apply his blood on their souls. To bring it down to a level that I can understand, 
that lays hold on the heart. Just think for a moment. You can take everything that has ever been written about the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of mercy, the sacrament of confession, and place it into all the libraries of the world and spend an eternity trying to read it. And it is pale in comparison to that personal experience of Almighty God in the confessional, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through the priest when he embraces you to say, I absolve you, your sins are forgiven. All the books in the world can't come close to that. But a father's touch, a loving, merciful God who says, put a ring on his finger, a cloak on his shoulders, put sandals on his feet, and an embrace of love speaks volumes through eternity. When we go to confession, we give Jesus Christ the joy of being our Savior. Just think, he takes those wounded hands and he places them upon your cheeks and he raises his hand through the hand of the priest and he says, by my precious blood, by these wounds that were opened for you, I absolve you from your sins and all heaven rejoices at the repentance of one sinner. You can honestly say, the angels do cartwheels of joy. And Lord knows, Father Joel, we need more joy in our life now, don't we? Jesus said to Faustina, in the confessional, the greatest miracles take place. And mercy is my greatest attribute. Write down these words, my daughter. Speak to the world about my mercy. Let all mankind recognize my unfathomable mercy. It is the sign of the end times. After it will come the day of justice. While there is still time, let them have recourse to the font of my mercy. Let them profit from the blood and water which gushed forth for them. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has dedicated next year as the year of mercy. God willing, this chapel of divine mercy will be a place of pilgrimage and of great graces and conversion. But I lay the challenge at every man, woman, and child here. What will you do to obtain God's mercy? Will you allow yourself to humble yourself, to go to confession, to change just not the lips or the words that come off the lips, but to change the heart through the grace of God to say, I would rather die than commit mortal sin. I want to give up a life of envy and licentiousness. I want to give up being unchaste. I don't want to carry the burden of the past. But I recognize through the grace of God, if I truly want sanctity in my life, I have to activate it by asking God to fill me with himself. In other words, to set me on fire with the love of God. What is your challenge to yourself? And just not for a 365-day period, but for the rest of eternity to grow always in the mercy of God, beginning with that simple act of humility, bless me, Father, and experience those words, I absolve you. You are free and forgiven. You are healed. The relationship that was once broken is now made whole. He asks one thing. Our firm resolve and I can't make that for you. That's an issue between you and God and God and you. And may he grant you the grace to truly, truly trust him and to grow in holiness by exercising your right to his mercy. At the conclusion of Mass this morning, I encourage everyone, please, 
take an examination of conscience with you. If you already have one, take one and give it to a friend. But exercise the, the principles in this examination so that when you stand before God in the tribunal of mercy, you truly come to understand it's not to condemn, it's to heal, it's to restore, it's to be one with Christ to the Father.